what our endpoint security and endpoint investigator products actually do during an incident response investigation or the types of data that's used d during threat hunting, what kinds of endpoint artifacts, what kind of endpoint telemetry, what kind of endpoint data or evidence, you know, there are a lot of different terms to describe it that are used in these type of investigations. Uh, typically, you're looking at things like network traffic, uh, you're, you're getting uh, information about running processes, users, uh, files that are running on the disk, information about the registry. <clears throat> and you use these to uh, um, do forensic investigations or use uh, employ various detection methods to tell if you have malware on the system, you have zero days, you have targeted custom built malware, or if you have rogue user accounts, or maybe even have an insider threat <clears throat> or some type of uh, um, hostile type user. Um, so some, some of the, so right off the bat, some of the things that you would do is use detection methods that will automatically tell you which of these is malware, which of these uh, is uh, a zero day. So let's just talk about some of these detection approaches that we do. So we do, um, <clears throat> we can check uh, file hash, uh, black and white lists. This is a, uh, uh, you know, an older technique that still used for sanity checks and still useful. Uh, also, uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, the newer type of signatures for detection like IOCs we do. Uh, we do YAR rules, which is a, a really nice way to uh, look inside static binaries on the disk and be able to um, tell if they are similar to existing malware out there or, or uh, known malware. Uh, we can do polymorphic malware detection with our entropy technology. So if you have malware that you have found and you're looking for polymorphic variants, we can do that as well. We support uh, um, common IOC for formats like sticks. Um, some other things we can do is uh, we have, um, when you're looking at a given process on a box, you could you could be looking at uh, how it's behaving, but another thing you can do is you can do security analytics. <clears throat> and you can do this with information about process running files and user accounts, and you can kind of plot out uh, over time on your network um, how normal this process, how normal this user, how normal this web traffic is. Is it something really common that you've seen a lot of machines or you've only seen it uh, on a very few, few, uh, few number of machines. So you're really looking at activity um, and then you're looking at uh, endpoints. Actually, I did that in reverse. You're looking at activity in essence and you're looking up here as how common that was, the number of endpoints that you've seen that on. So here, this is very common activity. Uh, if it's not common here, it's a statistical outlier, it's an anomaly. It's out of the norm, so um, security analytics is another uh, anomaly detection, whatever you're gonna call it, is another type of automatic detection we do. Now, <clears throat> we, don't, we, don't, um, we don't stop here just with homegrown technologies, even though we, we, we have a variety of approaches. Uh, we're, we're, it's very important to us that we partner up with other uh, detection technologies and uh, forensic tools that are very commonly used. People, uh, people know that the bad guys are ahead and you need to have more than a few detection approaches. And so it's quite common that our customers will subscribe to threat intelligence. And uh, we, with our endpoint security product, we automatically integrate with um, a variety of threat intelligence uh, platforms out there, the, the really popular ones that uh, our customers talk about, you know, the uh, virus total, last line, threat grid, a, a, a lot of these, we, ha we have a, a good handful, reversing labs, et cetera, so that um, you can get the latest threat intelligence uh, and, 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 and see the latest attacks that may be targeted to your sector, whether you're in banking or finance or you're a healthcare organization. The other thing we do is um, a lot of times these files, what customers will want to do is they'll want to submit files uh, to be run within uh, sandboxing technologies. And um, 
the malware uh, uh, or the binary is essentially running a sandbox to look for bad behaviors, and if it's willing to cooperate with the sandbox or if it displays that it's uh, trying to resist the sandbox or fool the sandbox in some way, then that's another detection approach that uh, we integrate with several of these companies. Um, we also, even when you're doing deep forensics, um, whether you're talking about endpoint security or if you're doing a deep dive forensics with NCASE uh, Investigator, we integrate with a number of forensic products uh, that do specialty forensics. For instance, say you wanted to take a, a memory image and you have a, uh, a memory forensics person. It's a little bit of a specialized field within forensics. You can use products like Volatility and our data can be uh, sent over to Volatility. If you want to do uh, additional registry forensics, we do. We do have reg registry forensics uh, functionality, but you can use RegRipper. Uh, there's, there's a whole host of, we actually have a package of uh, open source tools uh, and an integration with them called uh, EITT, which basically when you when you set up your instant response to automatically respond, you can send this information to these open source tools to supplement your forensics. And so this is, this is how we fit with these different kind of open source forensics tools, threat intelligence, sandboxing, and kind of surrounding detection tools that we integrate with so that you can uh, do the, the best job that you can uh, in uh, responding to incidents and detecting the bad guys.